Hey everyone, welcome back. I've been a bit busy IRL, hence my upload slowing down a little bit lately. Now yesterday we had an update that was mostly cosmetics. Thanks again DE for not giving content. And these four new augments alongside it added to Syndicate offerings. Now my first thought was instantly the amount of potential for airburst rounds, and that's what we're going to focus on today. So let's quickly go over how this augment works. Small warning though, it's extremely buggy. So for each enemy you hit, you get the listed 25% damage increase for secondaries, and this scales with strength. The base duration is 14 seconds, which luckily scales with duration. This does create interesting Zephyr builds because she doesn't usually mod much strength, if at all. Air Burst Rounds works as a base damage buff, so think Hornet Strike. This means you may not want to run plus damage on your Rivens for this setup because it interacts like Vex Armor. Optimally, on certain setups, you honestly wouldn't even run Hornet Strike at all, but that's super min-max. This ability does cap at a 500% base damage increase though, reminiscent of Hatasatya for Soma Prime, as well as Critical Surge for Wisp. Now the nice things about this augment. Every time you recast it, so long as you hit an enemy, it will reset the entire buff timer to full. This means you don't need sky high duration to keep it up. Once you got it, it's most likely sticking around the entire mission. Especially because Air Burst is a one-handed cast animation, meaning you can freely use it while bullet jumping around or reloading or shooting your weapon. It also retains the previous stack on each cast, meaning if you hit nothing, or a single enemy, it will not recalculate the buff using that as the baseline. Rather, any new enemy not previously hit by Air Burst will be eligible to add into the stacks further, meaning at 100% strength, if you manage to hit 20 separate enemies across the mission, it will max out the buff. This is super handy because it means you don't have to clump enemies together at once and get the max buff in one go, you can get it across a couple clumps of enemies instead. This is also nice because the buff basically sticks to you permanently. Now let's talk about the bugs. Some are good, most are bad. First, if you don't directly hit the enemies with the projectile, it will not count, nor does enemy collision damage. It also doesn't seem to count the separate airburst projectiles as individual hits. Each enemy is only eligible once for all three projectiles. Also, sometimes when you hit an enemy, it doesn't count towards the stack. I don't really know why this happens. Also, the projectile lacks punch through and doesn't seem to be able to hit enemies on the back side of the stack, so make sure you airburst the clump from the back afterwards for good measure to maximize the amount of buff you can get from that single clump. Finally, for some reason, some hits can count on the same enemy more than once. I also don't really know why this happens, but that's the only quote unquote bug that's actually beneficial. Now that we know how this works, let's try a few weapons out. The most obvious choice would be the Kuva Nukor, which everyone is already using. It actually handles okay, but is somewhat lacking. You want a lot of support from, say, Arcane Avenger or Mark of the Beast. It also uses raw damage, so it does have a limit on its scaling, whereas other weapons that focus more on slash, like Glaives, which would complement Nukor well, will pull ahead in endless missions. While also synergizing well with Glaives in a positive feedback loop, like I said, it's dated, and honestly quite boring using the same weapon over and over again. Now what if I told you there was another weapon that actually performed better with it, and also had endless scaling? Well, first let's go back to how Air Burst functions. You have a CC ability that clumps all enemies together and increases weapon damage. In theory, this works best for weapons that can spread a lot of status in an AoE area. The best statuses for this are Electric for the exponential chaining and proximity, Heat for the ease of spreading and stacking status while CCing them further, Gas for the exponential spread based on radius but it's been nerfed heavily, and Slash which is completely unaffected by armor and has endless scaling. Kuva Nukor in its optimal build will only really take advantage of heat in this scenario. This means it's failing to take full advantage of the ability. Additionally, with the extreme clumping potential of Air Burst, Kuva Nukor can only chain 4 other enemies for a total of 5 and has significantly reduced enemy for each one further down the chain. Kuva Nukor also has limited ammo and is a problem when used as an actual DPS weapon in higher levels. This kind of forces you to run a bunch of ammo recovery setups as well as other methods to mitigate this, which will limit options like Panzervolpa Phyla. Now there are a couple ways around this. Let's take a look at primary weapons again real quick. Recall Kuva Chakir, who came back into the spotlight with internal bleeding, giving it insane, ridiculous single target damage with force slash. 
then recall Queller, which did a little bit less damage and needed a little bit more work to get around the charge time, but had the potential to spread viral and had infinite punch through and AoE around its shot, effectively having the potential to reach an AoE chakra when built right. This is a weapon that takes the best advantage of air burst, AoE slash, and viral procs all in one go with zero fall off around the clump. The only problem? It's a primary weapon, so it doesn't benefit from the damage bonus of the augment itself. But there is a pistol that can do this, one that has largely fallen from grace over a period of several nerfs. Remember Catch Moon? The thing that had over 50% usage two years ago, and how DE nerfed its damage, gave it actual falloff damage, and increased the falloff distance. Well, it was brought back slightly by Hemorrhage, but it was still a shadow of its former self, lacking a lot of damage in and still having falloff problems that required Rivens to solve. But now, its potential really starts to shine again. We basically have a larva with extra bonuses. You may have thought Kuva Nucor was the best option here, but no. Catch Moon absolutely dumpsters on enemies with air bursts and doesn't need any other interaction in play. Obviously, stuff like Mark of the Beast would make it even stronger, increasing its crits more and giving it the realistic possibility of proccing viral when you need more than one shot. It significantly out-DPSs Kuva Nucor. Additionally, you can build it for Pax Charge, since it can't hit headshots anyways, which means it can't use Pax Bolt or Seeker. This also solves the ammo problem of Nucor. It also has no falloff on the entire clump of enemies. You will want to build for some higher fire rate with the parts closer to 2.5 or run an Arcane Velocity rank 4 if you're using the same parts I have to keep it just under 2.5 fire rate. This way you will retain the 70% impact conversion to Slash from Hemorrhage. A single shot from this is enough to kill an entire group of corrupted heavy gunners at level 150. You have 7 shots per magazine, and it only has a 1 second reload, as well as infinite ammo. Just imagine what this can do with Mark of the Beast or other buffs in play as well as dumping multiple shots at once. This means it has endless scaling since Slash ignores armor. If you wanted to min-max, you could actually drop Hornet Strike on the weapon to slot a ribbon with more multi-shot and critical damage, and if you're going against a specific faction that you know of, you could have actually picked up a ribbon with faction damage as well, as unlike other damage sources, faction damage actually gets stronger the more you have of it because of how it double dips. This will increase its per bullet damage significantly without oversaturating the base damage output. Now I actually ended up using this build alongside my Zephyr, where I wouldn't have thought of using Gloom on her previously. Yes, I know it's another Gloom build, but this one is a bit special. It complements it extremely well. Gloom reduces the chances of AoE weapons reaching you because that bypasses turbulence. But the big part is it slows down the knockdown stun recovery of Air Burst even further. This lets you dump in more Catch Moon shots and lets you trigger more Slash procs before they can get up back to shoot you. This effectively will always kill them before they can retaliate. Together, this puts Cash Moon back in play as an absolute powerhouse of a weapon on the secondary ranking list if you do use this augment. Now for helmets, I wouldn't really recommend using this on other frames because it requires a helmet slot and a mod slot for the augment. There are typically other options for weapon setups, so it's better suited to Zephyr herself and potentially frames with exalted pistols for interesting opportunities. Unfortunately, Airburst Rounds does not work on Mesa's Peacekeepers. I don't really know why, but this probably has something to do with the nature of the weapon as they also ignore Shock Trooper, Fireball Frenzy, and Freeze Force, but they are affected by Vex Armor and Roar, which many of us probably learned during Scarlet Spear. Air burst rounds also do not work with Dex Pixia. This is really unfortunate because this probably would have been the best application as these pistols technically have infinite ammo, but they do start having TTK problems at higher levels due to their non-AoE nature and limited magazine capacity. Slonger slash ticks would have made them much more comfortable to use by significantly increasing the per magazine damage. Now the last Exalted is Hildren, which actually does work on Balefire Charger. Why? I honestly don't know, but this might have to do with the fact that it isn't a channeled ability and is an actual weapon in its own right. It's a little bit awkward. But you would still go the full corrosive heat build for the CC and bonus damage against armor. It has some use, but falls off against heavily armored enemies and steel pads, unless you have a higher strength build set up for a proper armor strip on pillage, and definitely isn't remotely good enough for endless without near full armor strip. Is it useful? It's usable, I guess. Is it worth a helmet slot? 
Definitely not. I would rather run Breach Surge, Gloom, or Eternal Ward on her. So this augment is basically relegated to Zephyr only. Now to close out this video, I'll sum up what Airburst Round wants. It wants a weapon that can do AoE status and scaling procs, most notably Slash. Essentially looking for a Queller, but a pistol, like I previously said. Now there are very few secondaries that can do this. Epitaph, for example, has great procking potential, but its actual damage shots are nearly single target. Yes, they have punch through, but it can't clean up the group quickly because it's too pinpoint. We already went over Kuva Nucor, where it's good, but it still pales in comparison to Catch Moon due to its reduced damage on chaining, as well as limited enemy chaining, putting it solidly in second place. Azuma is another interesting option, but its ammo consumption is a little bit unsustainable and its damage still leaves something to be desired. So unless you have a god roll to take full advantage of its high disposition, it's not really viable. Euphona Prime theoretically could be another good contender, with its okay spread, extremely high damage, and very high slash bias on its alt fire with usable status chance. Unfortunately, it faces the problem of using a slot for punch through, a small magazine side, and disproportionately long reloads, as well as the AoE spread cone on its alt fire is still too small. The final verdict? Only Catch Moon can take full advantage of this augment and completely revitalizes the weapon. Kuva Nucor makes good use of it too and comes at a close second, but it really doesn't scale just as high. But if you do want to use it with Glaives, it is probably your best option. The rest? Gimmicky or forgettable? Also not worth Helmet slotting, best used on Zephyr. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 75.8% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done in covering Tempest Starry. I'm also preparing to get you the info out immediately first once the Sisters of Parvos mainline drops. You don't want to miss out on any of that. That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.